Hello, and welcome to Listening to the Verde, a series brought to you by Friends of the Verde River. I'm Nancy Steele, Executive Director of Friends of the Verde River. This program is designed to inspire and engage and inform you about everything that makes the Verde healthy, flowing rivers, abundant wildlife, and vibrant communities. And speaking of communities, I'm here today with two of our community leaders, Tribal Chairman of the Avapai Apache Nation, John Huey, and Cottonwood Mayor, Tim Olinsky. Welcome to both of you. Um, because we're talking about community today, I'm gonna to be asking them to talk about what makes the Verde special, not only to them personally, but also to their communities. Mm -hmm. So let's start with Chairman John. Can you talk to us a little bit about your background? I know that you were born in Cottonwood and raised in the Verde Valley. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. Well, first of all, thank you so much, Nancy, for having me here today, and it's an honor to sit here with the mayor of Cottonwood as well, so thank you. Uh, yeah, I was born in Cottonwood, right here at the uh, Verde Valley Hospital, and uh, lived in the Verde Valley my whole life, born and raised in Camp Verde, and uh, there's not uh, probably any summers that I don't remember spending time on the Verde River, either fishing or, uh, you know, on a rope swing and uh, yeah. just having a great time uh, growing up. And you don't think about the seriousness of some of the things that uh, uh, affect the river these days with, with droughts and uh, as low as the water is getting because you want to just have a good time when you're younger. But I have lots of great memories of being on the Verde River growing up in the Verde Valley. So it's really been a blessing to live in the Verde Valley, to have such a natural resource available, not just for me, but for my family and also for the tribal community that I serve. So. Can you tell us one of those special memories? Oh, geez, I've lived in uh, living in Camp Verde. I've lived in Fort River Caves and uh, Fort Lincoln, and both those areas were right on the river. Very green, very luscious. Uh, the fishing was absolutely wonderful. Uh, I've I've actually been able to catch some great uh, catfish out of the Verde River back when there was a lot of river access. Um, today it seems a lot more reduced with residential and commercial building along the rivers. Um, but back then there was a lot of great areas and the river was a lot higher than it is now and the fishing was just absolutely wonderful. Um, Probably going down there with my dad. I remember taking a couple of fishing trips and learning how to fish with him. And uh, you know, every child should have a memory, spend time with their dad going fishing. And uh, we had a great time. Uh, he's he's long past now, and um, I remember those memories fondly. Wonderful, Mayor Tim. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I I know you spent a lot of time on the East Verde as a mm -hmm. child. That's right. Yep. So I I didn't grow up here in the Verde Valley, but mm -hmm. up north of Payson. So oh, okay. I was on the East Fork of the Verde. Um, but it was a big part of my childhood. Um, I, I spent most summer days down along the East Verde, uh, a lot of hiking, and, and uh, we were talking before the show about inner tubing. We certainly did a lot mm -hmm. of uh, inner tubing uh, down the Verde. And uh, yeah, me and my siblings, or just me alone, uh, would go down and just recreate and enjoy uh, the East Verde and all it had to offer. And it was kind of a year round thing, really, because. Mm -hmm. You know, summer, of course, was great just to cool off. Um, but winter, in those days, the river would freeze over too, so it was great for mm. ice skating and, and that wow. sort of thing. Um, and, uh, and all other times, you know, after a big flood, it was always fun to go down and scavenger hunt <laughs> yeah. and, and see what sort of weird flotsam and jetsam and floated up to the, to the shore. Um, but it was, it was great. It definitely sparked my imagination. Um, the, the river really, truly was a, a companion uh, to me in my youth, and I have very fond memories. And you left the Verde for a while, right? And then you came back? Yeah, so I, um, I spent my childhood there and then um, in high school we went up to Oregon. Um, so I spent some time up in the soggy Northwest, <laughs> which <laughs> made me appreciate uh, <laughs> my home state uh, so much more. Um, and I, sent, I spent some time overseas as well, Eastern Europe, lived over in Eastern Europe for, for some time and um, and came back and eventually wound my way back here to the to the Verde Valley. I've had family here for a mm -hmm. while. Um, in fact, I do have memories also as a kid of being on the Verde. I had an aunt that lived not too far from the Verde uh, here in, in Cottonwood. So um, yeah, it would definitely have a lot of family connections here and, and ties to the area. And, and it, there's simply no better place to live. Yeah. I think we all know that. Yeah. So it brought you back here. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. both of you are elected officials. How did that come about? How, I mean, talk a little bit. Chairman Huey, why did you decide to run for office? That's a great question. <laughs> um, I actually have served uh, on the Tribal Council for the Avapai Apache Nation on two other terms from 2006 to 2012, um, and then uh, continued with law enforcement. And 
you know, there were some unique opportunities I thought was coming up with the tribe that I really wanted to be involved in. Uh, some of it economic development or, or water settlement or some of the bigger plans that uh, ultimately would benefit the tribe and I wanted to have a voice in that. So I thought, uh, what a great time to run. In September of last year we had an election I actually won the seat as chairman and uh, it really is an honor and a privilege to, to get to serve uh, the Avapai Apache Nation. There's so many good things that the tribe um, is in the process of doing. Uh, COVID-19 slowed a few things, but ultimately uh, we still got some huge goals and some things that we want to do. And, uh, you know, being involved and having a voice in your community is really important. Um, it's easy to sit back and judge and criticize, but to have a voice and to be active in your community, um, it speaks a lot about, you know, who you are and what you're trying to do. And, you know, uh, those are the things that, you know, myself and the other council members that sit on the tribal council, uh, you know, want to be involved in. We want to have a voice. We want to share ideas and uh, just, uh, you know, make the Yavapai Apache Nation just a great uh, place to live for our community and a safe and uh, uh, just really prosper. So it's been really fun. That's great. That's mm -hmm. great to hear. Tim, what is your path to uh, elected <laughs> office? Um, yeah, interestingly, so I was living at the house uh, that my my aunt lived in, in Cottonwood. I'd moved into that home, the one close to the Verde. And uh, in my neighborhood, there was um, something coming up on the Planning and Zoning Commission's uh, agenda to put in a higher density um, project in our okay. resident or our agricultural neighborhood. So um, I was one of those that was critical and, and pointing fingers and saying, <laughs> how can you do this? And, and I realized I didn't want to be uh, that one who uh, just tells you what the problem is without offering any solutions. And so I thought, instead of just being here uh, as a rabble rouser, maybe I should throw my hat in. Mm -hmm. And so I did, and there was an opening on planning and zoning, and I applied and uh, was appointed by council, it, which shocked me. Um, <laughs> this was 15 plus years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I served there for a year, and then again, an opening on council, and um, served on council um, ever since, really, mm -hmm. and was you know elected mayor. Um, and now I'm in my second term as mayor, and. Um, so I, I kind of had an unusual uh, entrance into, into politics, maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't consider myself a, a political person necessarily, but when you love your community as, as you do, as you understand that uh, you have to serve, and yeah. that's really what it's all about. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, that's great. I mean, I thank both of you for, for stepping up and serving. That's uh, a lot of work, and uh, I'm sure it's often thankless. Um, <laughs> I'm sure you're it's often it's moments. subject to, yeah. <laughs> Once in a while. Yeah. yeah. So um, let me shift gears a little bit. Mm -hmm. In um, and I want to talk about the Verde Watershed Report Card in 20, or at least its findings. In, in 2020, we uh, published the Verde Watershed Report Card, and it gave the, the watershed as a whole, not just the river, but the watershed as a whole, which stretches, you know, from from Pace and to Prescott, and mm -hmm. from Mount Humphreys all the way down to the where the river merges with the salt in the Phoenix area, and um, we looked at three different areas. We looked at habitat, water flows, and community. Right. And actually, although the watershed as a whole received a C plus, our communities. Uh, interestingly enough, we're pretty healthy, mm -hmm. at least by the measures we looked at. We looked at recreation, we looked at engagement, civic engagement, and also digital engagement. Um, and then we looked at uh, community vitality. And the lowest scoring area of the entire watershed report card was affordability. So we have an issue in this region that was identified as people being, uh, people spending too much of their income on their housing. Yeah. Um, so when we think about housing, you know, kind of what does that have to do with the river? Um, but we felt, and, and not just us, we had a, a whole bunch of people that we asked, um, what do you think is important to know about? And it's really about how do we ensure this is a good place to live while protecting our rivers and our natural habitat. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to kind of throw those, that question back to the both of you. Yeah. What do you think about how we can ensure this is a good place to live while protecting our wildlife and our rivers? Mm -hmm. I'll, either one of you can take it first. 
I'll, I'll start off. Okay. Uh, you know, first of all, the report card is very good information. I really hope that the residents of the Verde Valley, you know, read those reports and get to understand what all it entails, um, because there's a lot of great information there that really informs people in regards to residential. If you're going to build here, um, it's a lot more than just building a home. You're going to use water. You're going to use space. You're going to use land. Um, and because the Verde Valley is such a great place to live, I mean, why would you not want to build and grow here? Um, but that, you know, also hurts our natural resources in lots of different ways. In this case, the Verde River, uh, you know, growing up here and in the 80s, like I said, the river was a lot more abundant and higher than it is now. And uh, as I kayak up and down on, on as one of my hobbies, you know, you can see where a lot of people have, you know, tapped into the Verde River and they're pumping. Um, and to provide water for their communities or their residential or for their agriculture. Uh, you know, that pays a toll on the river, which is a natural resource, and we, uh, we just need to be observant of that. So those report cards or any reports that come out about our area, I really hope people read those and take into consideration before they just, you know, start building and think about the big picture. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have a little time before our break, Tim, for you to respond to that question. Okay. Um, well, uh, development's, of course, a uh, you know, hot topic and has been for years in the Verde Valley. I think Cottonwood is, is well prepared to, um, to manage its growth. We have, uh, I think, better control than other areas of our uh, natural resources. Our, um, you know, we have our municipal water uh, company as well as our uh, sewer facilities. Mm -hmm. So we have um, the ability to recapture about, I think, close to 70% of the water that we deliver which is a great plus because then we can direct inject that back into the aquifer. And so as we grow, we're making sure that we do so smartly. Um, but I think the biggest thing we can do as a municipality is to really try to attract the right type of growth to Cottonwood. Certainly mm -hmm. it's uh, market driven, you know, growth is market driven, we understand that. But um, in building relationships with, with friends and with the, the development community, we can try to, um, you know, message our community as, as one that attracts folks that are uh, water wise and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know kind to the environment so when we do build developments where we are attracting those types of people who who want to continue the great work and the, the legacy work that friends have done and the city has done and all of our regional partners to make sure that again we just have as, as little impact as possible on our wonderful Verde Valley. Yeah. Great yeah. well it's uh, time for a break so we'll be right back after this short break to talk about how the Verde River contributes to our vibrant communities. Welcome back to Listening to the Verde. My name is Nancy Steele, and I'm here with Chairman John Huey and Mayor Tim Alinsky, talking about living in this rare and beautiful place that has a river running through it. Well, thank you two again for joining me. And I wanna kick this part of the program off with talking about what have you learned from the Verde, and why is it important to your community, to our community? So. Chairman John, you want to talk a little bit about what you've learned from the Verde and how it's important to us? I, yeah, I'd love to. Um, culturally, for the Avapai Apache Nation, a lot of our, uh, our cultures and our religion is based along, you know, with the Verde River, and uh, that's important to our people and our community because there's some resources that the river provides that um, are used in our ceremonies. Uh, you know, the cattail along the Verde River, um, you know, is used in our uh, events and. Um, so it's a resource that provides for my community, for the Avapai Apache Nation, a lot of cultural meaning. And uh, that's really important to us because that is the way that the Avapai and the Apaches have lived in this area since the beginning of time. And we don't want to waste the resource. We want to make sure it's there for a long time to come for our community because the Avapai Apache Nation is always growing. Um, we want to ensure that it's there for a long time. So culturally, there's a lot of ties that the Avapai and the Apache have with the water and with the Verde River specifically. 
Yeah. What what concerns you about the future of the Verde River and, and your community? So the loss of the river um, that would bring things, like I said, the cattails, uh, having those go away, those would eliminate some of our past and our present practices. And that, that's just detrimental to our culture. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know we need to make sure that those stay growing for our youth so they know who they are and where their ancestors and family came from. Um, and ultimately, we, we want to see the Verde survive not just for the Avapai Apache Nation, but for the whole, you know, Ver, you know, Cottonwood, Camp Verde, Sedona, Clarkdale, Jerome. We all live in this area, and it's really important that we preserve it. How are you, what steps are you taking? How, how are you, how, how's that coming to action for you? So as taking chairman, we, uh, we've been carrying along, and long before me, with previous chairs in my place, we've been, uh, you know, have discussions of our water settlement and projects that we can re-enter water back into the uh, Verde River safely. Um, you know, with our water settlement, we've got some great attorneys that we've hired that have really made a lot of great progress for us to try to reach settlement. And, uh, you know, we're trying to face through those now. And uh, we're hoping this year would be a great year to kind of move a lot of progress with our settlement and come to agreements with all the local municipalities and, and um, people that have rights to the Verde River. Um, you know, the Avapai Apache Nation is probably the oldest, you know, uh, uh, land bearer to, to the Verde Valley since the beginning of time. And, uh, yeah. you know, our legal battle with our settlement is, it's ongoing, but we uh, hope we can endure and, and uh, reach a good settlement for the tribe. If somebody doesn't know what the settlement is, can you can you explain that? Sure. The settlement that we're trying to reach for the Avapai Apache Nation is insurement of water. Uh, the Verde River, uh, for people that don't know, it provides water not just for the Verde River, but for the metropolitan area down south of us as well. And uh, you know, everybody wants a right to the Verde River. We have residents, municipalities, uh, agricultural um, ditch owners that you know are all needing river. We all need it to survive because water is life. And uh, our settlement that we're trying to reach is to ensure that my community, the Avapai Apache Nation, um, has a right to that water for a long time to come. Okay. I think that, I think that clears it up. <laughs> in, in 20 words or less, describe yeah, what it is. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's a lot more than that, but really, we want to ensure water for our community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mayor, I, I'm sure that the Cottonwood Ensuring water for cottonwood is also important to you. You talk a little bit about uh, what concerns you and what what you're trying to do to protect your resource. Sure. Th yeah. Thanks for the the question. Um, absolutely. I think you know what what keeps us all up at night is is imagining the Verde River uh, running dry. I mean that's right. that's something that uh, it would be devastating for our community. Um, <clears throat> You know, I like I said, I grew up on the East Verde. You grew up on the Verde. I think there's a there's a part of us that um, not that we take it for for granted, but we we've always known that it's that it's there. Um, and you know, one thing the Verde's taught me is uh, that people are extremely passionate about the Verde. Um, but there's this kind of a tug of war too that takes place sometimes, and I, I sometimes fall in the camp where I love it so much I don't want anyone to know about it. <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. I like my little secret holes where I can go swimming or fishing and um, and I don't want it to get trampled on. Um, uh, but on the other hand, uh, that's that's not really good long term. I mean, I think, you know, one thing I've always said is that the more you love something, the, the harder you're going to work to protect it. Mm -hmm. So really, you know, my, my goal as mayor is to make sure that um, first and foremost, our community loves our river and, and we understand its vitality uh, through and through to our communities and that all our visitors that come to the area too uh, grow to love our, our river and uh, through that love, uh, that connection, they'll do everything they can to protect it. Um, so what are we doing here in Cottonwood to protect it? Again, uh, we're pumping less groundwater um, mm -hmm. since we purchased the private water companies 20 years ago, pumping a lot less groundwater. Um, we are strengthening our relationship with, with friends <coughs> and our regional partners to make sure that we, uh, you know, we brand our community appropriately. That, that people um, know that you need to respect and preserve the river. A river-friendly uh, community. River-friendly right? community. That's mm -hmm. correct. Mm -hmm. um, and and I really appreciate you know, again the friends stepping up and helping us um, with, with some of the developers that are coming forward and, and wanting to do some some larger projects to make sure that we we do those in in an appropriate and responsible way. Um, whether by adjudication or settlement, I think mm -hmm. we, we all want to have some security in knowing how much water our communities have. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I work 
well with your predecessor, Chairwoman Winnicky. Yes. I know I'll work well with you as well. Um, it's it's critical to our communities that, that we know uh, what we have. And uh, but at the end of the day, it it's it's water in the river that matters the most. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. True. What would you say the river has taught you? Um, what has it taught me? That's um, <laughs> that's a that's a tough question. Um, I, I think. You know, it's it's taught me, in a strange way, it's taught me patience. I think, um, you know, th this adjudication has been going on. I think since before I was born, <laughs> it's yeah. Yeah. a long time. <laughs> a long um, time. And uh, and yet the river continues to flow. And I think, um, you know, we, we have to remain patient and vigilant with our with our partners um, and making sure that we keep keep our focus. I think is is the main thing. Um, but it's right. it's challenging. For sure, um, everybody wants to save the Verde. Um, the, the the path forward is is not as clear as you might think, uh, and I think that's the problem. So it does take uh, patience, building partnerships, respect, mm -hmm. education, all those things. Yeah, yeah. Chairman, what would you say the river has taught you? Um, like Mayor Linsky said, respect. Uh, you know, learning about these resources, and you just think that they're going to be there forever, when realistically. Um, you know, we're growing, you know, worldwide and there's more people, there's more resources that are going to be used and uh, you don't think about that when you're younger growing up and swimming or tubing or fishing, but you know, as you get older and you understand uh, everything it takes to live life and um, you have to really respect those things, whether it be the land or the water and, uh, you know, for the tribe, you know, specifically, like I said, it's, they've got rituals that have gone back, you know, thousands of years. so. The option of losing these these valuable resources, it, it, it's really tough, and you really have to respect them. So when you use them, use them wisely. You know, respect them, and hopefully they stay here for a long time to come. Yeah, yeah. We talk a lot about sustainability. Mm -hmm. uh, we talk a lot about resilience. Um, I think in my case, I want sustainability for the river. I yes. want it to be a sustainable river with, with flows, um, and and that's the same for our communities. And I think a lot about how the the river is kind of, is necessary to our our community's health here, um, and I assume that that you all also feel that way. Right. What do you say to someone who says, "Ah, oh, the river's going to dry up anyway. I don't care." <laughs> I can't <laughs> say it on that. camera. Which one of you wants to? <laughs> what, what do you say to those people? they would probably be happier living somewhere else. <laughs> oh, there, there we go. <laughs> you know, I understand that someday, yeah, that could be true, but we still have responsibilities as human beings to preserve them um, and not just waste them. So, you know, it's doable. It's doable. And there's a lot of parties at the table, and, uh, you know, it's a joint effort by all means. And we have to have very serious, you know, sometimes tough discussions to talk about all of our needs for our communities, but those meetings have to happen. And uh, ultimately it's, uh, as the Verde Valley, it's the heart of our Verde Valley and we wanna preserve it. Yeah, yeah, I mean for me it's not a hypothetical. In, in my first couple of months here um, with Friends of the Verde River, I actually had somebody say that to me. Mm -hmm. It's gonna dry up anyway, yeah. It's a, it's a pessimistic attitude that um, mm -hmm. it doesn't move us forward. Um, mm -hmm. I, I run into a lot of folks too that would like to bury their heads in the sand or just you know believe that it's it's faded to, to dry up. But um, I, I I disagree. I think there's a lot that we can and should do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm glad you're both very hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, what's your favorite animal in the Verde? Boy, in the Verde, I mean, we've got so many that come to our area in the Verde. Uh, you know, you got the elk that are up a little bit higher, and you got deer. Oh, geez, the fish have been great. We do have a lot of beavers now. I'm sensing uh, a food the theme, actually, here. <laughs> <laughs> elk, deer, fish. <laughs> I'm an avid hunter, so, yeah. you know, there's a lot of resources, and, and uh, it's hard to pick just one, but there there is quite a few. We're pretty, yeah. we're pretty lucky, actually, to have this type of wildlife in our area. We are. Mm -hmm. We are. You, you brought in the otter earlier before the show, and it, it's funny because I, I do love to see an otter in the in the Verde. I remember as a kid, I, I would see beaver from time to time, but I'd never had seen very many otters until here in the Verde. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We were hiking in uh, Sycamore 
canyon one time, actually not too long ago, and I saw two otters in the in the pool right as we right as we came down around um, that first place where you see the the water. Yeah. And there were two otters playing there. Yeah. It's so special. Um, so river otters, your favorite? That, that's yep. That's my top pick. You're gonna go with the yeah. okay. They're elusive. They're hard to find. So <laughs> when you see one, it's pretty special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have to say probably the fish, bass in our Verde River has been been great. You it's know, been when, great. When me and my family go and uh, enjoy the Verde River, you know, they've been able to catch some great fish and just makes for great memories. And you know, we've never kept them. We've always slown them back because we want them to thrive in the Verde and make it mm. fun for everybody. So okay. Yeah. Yeah, fish are good. Mm-hmm. All right, any last thoughts you want to share with our viewers? We just have a, about a minute or so to go. Uh, mainly, uh, just it's been great support from the Friends of the Verde. Uh, you know, I'm really looking forward the rest of my term working with the local municipalities, you know, at Camp Verde, Cottonwood, Sedona, Clarkdale, and the groups such as the Friends of the Verde River um, who have the same priorities and same, you know, goals and, and uh, things we want to do for the Verde River. So I just want to say thank you and allow me the opportunity to come here and speak on behalf of my, my tribe, the Avapai Apache Nation. So thank you. All right. Thank you. Mayor? Yeah. Really appreciate the opportunity. It's been great to sit down with you. I'm glad I finally got to meet you not in non-virtual sense. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm really looking forward to working with you uh, more, more closely. Um, one last thing I wanted to share is uh, uh, Mayor Von Gossick of, of Clark, I've, I've said this time or two before, but years ago I, I think his, his plan to save the Verde was to bring one kayaker at a time down the river. And I, I remember at the time, and this was years and years and years ago, thinking, well, that's that's just the dumbest idea I've ever heard. How, how are you going to make any progress by taking one person at a time down the river and showing them all the great things about it? Um, but here we are decades later and it's, it's making a big difference in the Verde. Um, mm -hmm. And again, it just goes back to, to you know, helping people uh, love the, you know, the, the resource that we have. And um, it, when my daughters, both daughters were first born, as soon as I could yank them out of the hospital, we, we dragged them down to the Verde and dipped them in the water. Nice. And, and we do that frequently. We, we go there all the time. We don't live far uh, from the Verde, so it's mm -hmm. a quick walk from our house. Um, and I'm just doing everything I can to instill in them a love also for the Verde. And uh, it's, it's very much that, that Doug Von Gossick <laughs> philosophy. Yeah. Where, yeah. You know, yeah. If it's just one at a time, then that's, that's, if that's the best you can do, that's all you can do, but it, does, it does make a difference. And, and children are our future. Correct. Definitely. Yes. Well, thank you both. And um, thank you for watching this episode of Listening to the Verde with our special guests, Mayor Tim Olinsky and Chairman John Huey. To learn more about the topics we covered here today and others, you can watch more episodes of Listening to the Verde. Please visit our website, verderiver.org forward slash listening. Thank you very much. Listening to the Verde is brought to you by Friends of the Verde River. Please visit verderiver.org backslash listening for more videos and resources.